Hi everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. We're going to review this little baby. This is Jay-Z, or Jay zs new microphone, the Vintage V12. And we put it through its paces. We recorded a cover of Whiter Shade of Pale with the lovely Katie Ferrara singing, Blair Sinter on drums, myself playing guitar and bass, and of course, the amazing Mr. Steve Magora on keys. So stay tuned and check out the track. So let's get stuck in. Let's listen to the tracks. Now, of course, you are going to be able to download the multi-tracks here. And you can do whatever you like with them. You can mix them in any way, shape, or form. So first of all, we have the drums recorded in the Glyn Johns Technique. Now, we only have one V12. So we dug up the V67 and the Amethyst. 
So you've got all three of these mics, all JZ mics or JZ mics, depending on where you come from. They're all measured in phase. Now, what we did is we went with what Glenn used to talk about, two and a half to three sticks away. So we got somewhere like two and three quarter sticks distance. We then measured that with a tape measure and then measured it equally to here and measured it equally to there. So they're all exactly the same distance away from the snare and each other to get the phase as accurate as you possibly can. Now it will never be perfect because it does also see different things at different times. The mix that we've done is all EQ out. So you should be able to just solo it, listen to it, add your own EQ, compression and everything. And because we wanted to do a little bit of old school, we did cheat a little bit and we did put the drums through the Kadak console. And the thing about the cadet, even though the EQ is not engaged, that, that mic pre has a little tiny bit of transient roll off. There is some transformers in there. You know, it added probably a gnats of coloration on that. But of course you could do that in the box. You could go through your interface and then add some console emulation, you know, play around with it. I don't know, take the mics, do whatever you like with them. But Let's go and check out the sound. All right, now you've seen how we did it. Let's give it a listen. Here's the three mics together. Now what I did is I added a drum reverb and all I did was use a good old fashioned DigiDesign D-verb. Obviously now it's Avid. And as you can see, it's mix is set to 100%. It's a medium plate with 1.2 seconds. Take the reverb off. Reverb back on. The Glyn Johns always works if your drummer plays evenly. That's really the secret. It's got to have the drummer playing evenly. And you can mix those anywhere you want, of course. You can have some fun with them. And the bass, of course, was just the mic on the Ampeg. And I must say, of all the things in this song, that was actually the hardest to figure out from the original tracks. It's quite a busy bass line, and it follows all of the movement and, you know, the obvious thing, like the descending line. But then there's all these little leady bits that it does, like this. That was quite simple, I suppose. Just going up the scale. fun groove, here's the bass and drums together. So this is Katie's acoustic guitar. Now, as you can see, I've got the reverb panned opposite. So she's panned all the way to the left, the reverb is panned all the way to the right. Here's no reverb. Bring the reverb in. Let's bring in the bass, drums. The electric guitar was my Yamaha Revstar, which I saw a photograph that came up in my feed today. I think I got it six years ago today. I've been using that guitar on sessions now for six years. Doesn't seem that long ago. Yowza. Wonderful, wonderful guitar. So, the electric guitar is panned right and its reverb is panned left. So what I'm doing is I'm playing the organ melody and filling it in with some arpeggios. So it sort of sits between the organ and the acoustic and the bass and drums. So that's my Fender Deluxe Tone Master mic'd with the V12. Let's put the acoustic, the electric, the bass, and the drums together, and this is what we get. Now, the organ, was Steve's Nord, which I'm sure you saw in the video, and that was direct. 
We didn't put that through an amp, but I'll just let you listen to it anyway. Here's the organ. Bring the electric, acoustic, bass, and drums. And there is a separate low organ as well, which is actually buried in the mix, but it just adds a little bit more movement to it. Because you've got the right hand melody and then you've got the left hand is playing. So we just separated the right and left hand apart. So you can put the two together and you get this. Put everything else in. Now, a lot of people don't realize this because it's quite actually quite loud in the mix, but in the original, there's a piano playing. And we just did, again, a Nord piano. There's a little bit of reverb on it. Just a little bit. I've got like a large, uh, it says a large plate, it's about one and a half seconds, but it's, it's buried in there at about 18%, but a little bit of reverb on it as well. So let's put all of those elements together. All right, but last but no means least, of course, is the most important part of any song, the vocal. So here is Katie's vocal with effects on it. We skip the light fandango Turn cartwheels cross the floor I was feeling kind of seasick And you can tell I have some delays on it. I have um, some reverbs. They're actually ducking delays. So when she sings, the delays are quite quiet. And as soon as she stops singing, delays come up in volume. We'll give you also our H3000 trick, which is, is very low in the mix, but. We skip the laugh and then go. So that's pitching up and down. So we'll give you those as well. And we'll give you the multi effects that we print from the console where we use our lexicon. So all together, we get this. We skip the light and then go. Turn cartwheels cross the floor. I was feeling kind of seasick. The crowd called out for more. And the room was swimming harder. There you have it. Download all of the multi tracks, mix away. Let us know what you think about the mic. Okay, I'll give you my impressions. I think it's a really great classic sounding microphone. I have a lot of fun with that. To me, that sounds as good as most of the vintage microphones that I use. I think that's, well, no, I don't think. I know that's what they're going for. It sounds great. They are doing a special deal as this is release day. And if you use the code Warren, you get free shipping. So anywhere in the world, they will ship it to you for free. So please, if you want to buy it, put in the word Warren. The other day I was watching um, some video stuff, as you do, and I watched the Mick Jagger and uh, Dave Grohl song that they did together about four or five months ago. And I noticed that Mick Jagger was singing into one of the 67 versions of this. And I contacted the company and said, hey, that's really cool that Mick Jagger's using your microphone. And they didn't know. So Mick must have bought it. So it wasn't even a freebie. So that's pretty cool. I thought of Mick Jagger's using the mics. That's probably not a bad thing, is it? Anyway, I love the mics. They've done a wonderful job. Lots of people I know are buying these because they're relatively inexpensive as additional microphones to have. 
you know, when you don't want to go out and spend $15,000 on vintage mics, they're a fraction of the cost of that. The other thing about them, as you know, I'm sure, is it's the original, you know, manufacturer blue. So they're made to an incredibly high quality. And uh, God bless them. All right. Please don't forget to download the multitracks. Give us any opinions. Would love to know. Do you use Jay-Z, Jay-Z mics? Let us know. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing, and we'll see you all again very, very soon. And I look forward to hearing your mixes. If you're an Academy member, post them in the Academy so I can hear them, and we'll do a mixed critique of them. So long, farewell, adios, adio, sayonara, ciao, goodbye, farewell, adieu, au revoir. I'll keep going. Goodbye. <laughs>